Hey there. So I think the thing my wife misses the most right after pizza is Asian food. And being gluten-free, it's just hard to eat out at an Asian restaurant because we don't know what ingredients are in everything. Today, I'm going to make a gluten-free beef lo mein with ground beef. This is an easy ground beef stir fry recipe and we're gonna use things that are easily accessible. Things like gluten-free spaghetti that you can get right in the grocery store. It's not difficult to find, it's just about everywhere. We're using ground beef, which is a little more affordable than other cuts of meat. The vegetables are totally customizable. And I've got a couple substitutes that you can use if you can't find some of the Asian ingredients. I'm Jamie with Savory Saver. I share gluten-free recipes, tips, tricks, and resources to make your gluten-free lifestyle easier. So please consider hitting subscribe and let's get started. So to get this recipe started, the first thing I would suggest is getting everything ready before you start cooking. Get all your vegetables prepped and ready to go and get your sauce made. And then all you have to do is cook. So the first thing you need to do is get your favorite spaghetti. This is Ronzoni. I'm not real picky on my gluten-free pastas. Uh, we tend to try different pastas to see what we like. This one we like. We also like Delalo's gluten-free pasta. We like Tingata. Just depends on what we're making. So I'm gonna use half of this 12 ounce box and I do not boil my gluten-free pastas anymore. I have switched to where I bring the water to a boil. I put it in for a minute or so, and then I cover it and turn it off until it's ready. So if you wanna check out that video, I will link to it below. It's definitely changed the way that I cook gluten-free pasta. It doesn't get mushy. It stays together better. It doesn't boil over. So I highly suggest you checking out that video. So get your water on to boil. And we're gonna put this to the side until it is, and let's start making the sauce. So the sauce recipe is really easy. I like putting it together so it's ready to go. It's gonna have a little bit of cornstarch in it, which is gonna thicken that sauce, make it nice and shiny all over everything. We're gonna add that right at the end. So the first thing you wanna add is three tablespoons of gluten-free hoisin sauce, which is similar to a barbecue type sauce. And I don't always have hoisin sauce on hand that's gluten-free. So today, I'm gonna to substitute a little bit of barbecue sauce and a little bit of molasses. And that is gonna give us a similar effect to the gluten-free hoisin sauce. I will link below to gluten-free hoisin sauce if you wanna get some to keep on hand if you do a lot of Asian cooking. But today, I'm just gonna substitute. I will make sure that the printable recipe has all the amounts, but I'm always trying to do better as far as eyeballing amounts. So today I'm gonna to do that. So I'm gonna put in two tablespoons of barbecue sauce. I'm gonna add about one tablespoon of molasses. Next, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of gluten-free soy sauce. And I actually find this at Big Lots. So if you have a Big Lots near you, check it out. It runs a dollar a bottle, super affordable. Uh, if not, Kikomon makes one and there's some other brands out there, but they tend to be a little more expensive. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of that. Next, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of gluten-free oyster sauce. And that I do have on hand and can find that pretty available in my grocery store. One, two. Next, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of regular water just to thin it out a little bit. If you don't have the next ingredient. I've got a little bitty tip on that. I'm using some dry sherry. I'm only gonna use a tablespoon of it, but if you don't have dry sherry, try a little bit of white wine vinegar or rice wine vinegar or rice vinegar or a little bit of apple cider vinegar. Just go about a teaspoon of that. I'm gonna use about a tablespoon of this.
The next ingredient I'm gonna show you, but I'm not gonna add it because Tara is actually allergic to it as well. It is sesame oil. You wanna add a couple teaspoons of sesame oil if you can use it. Um, since Tara is allergic to it, what I do is I take it and drizzle it on my bowl of food. That way there I still get the sesame flavor. The last thing we're gonna add is two teaspoons of cornstarch and one teaspoon of brown sugar. So put that in there. And of course, the brown sugar will sweeten it a little bit and the cornstarch will thicken it. Normally, I do not add this to the sauce, but I only have a small piece of ginger, so I'm gonna add just a little bit of powdered ginger to it. And it'll cook up with the sauce. So normally that wouldn't be added, but I'm gonna add it here. So if you don't have fresh ginger, add half a teaspoon to a teaspoon of dried ginger. So our sauce is all made and mixed. We'll give it a stir before we add it to our pan, but I'm gonna put that off to the side. Let's get our vegetables all cut up, ready to go, because they're all gonna go in at the same time. So what I'm using today is one bell pepper that I'm going to thinly slice, half of a medium onion that I'm gonna thinly slice, one carrot sliced, some snap peas, you could also use snow peas. I'm just gonna cut these in half just to make them stretch a little farther. I've got one stalk of celery, one big clove of garlic, you wanna run a teaspoon of it, and then I've got one sad little piece of ginger that came out of the freezer, so I'm gonna chop that up and throw it in there, but that's why I added the powder to the sauce. So let's get all these ready to go and off to the side. Guys, when I cut up a pepper, usually what I do is I just go right on through the stem and to the bottom, get my bowl over here, and then I just put a couple fingers in and then pull it down and that pulls out the core. And then I can pull out any of the ribs if I need to and dump the seeds again. Just put two fingers in, pop it down, takes out the whole core. That way there I can use all of this pepper up here, all of this down here, and I don't have any waste. And then you just want it thinly sliced. And then I usually cut it in half one more time. It's gonna make it easier for me to Stir fry as well as stretch that pepper out a little bit. For my onion, I just wanna cut it in slices. Put it to the side. Peas, I just want to cut in half. You don't have to, of course. My carrot, sometimes I like to try to be a little fancy even though I'm totally not. So I slice it on the angle a little bit. And then I think, let's not do circles. Let's do half moons. So let's slice it long ways, and then we'll do angles. Now my celery, we'll do it the same way. This is about a stalk, so I'm gonna slice it. Now for my garlic and ginger, and what I'm gonna do is I have that bowl that I have my cornstarch and brown sugar in. I'm just gonna finely mince these, and then I'm gonna put it back in the bowl because when my vegetables start, I don't want my garlic and ginger to overcook. So I will put that in for about 30 seconds just before I add my sauce.
All right, with our vegetables and our garlic and ginger cut and ready to go, let's head over to the stove and get cooking. So we're over the stove and I have my heat set on medium high and in my pan, I have got just about a pound of ground beef and just get the biggest skillet you have because there's gonna be a lot in here when we start tossing everything and we wanna make sure we have enough room. So we're gonna brown the ground beef, crumble it up as small as you want. If you want bigger pieces, leave bigger pieces. If you want it finely ground, keep on mashing it down. I'm using this contraption here. We've been using it for about six or seven months at least now, and I love it. It does a great job of breaking up that ground beef in a pan to get it all crumbled. So if you're looking for something like this, I will link below to it as well, but we really like it. So I'm gonna brown this up and then we'll get in the veg. Once your beef is nice and brown, you can decide if you need to drain it or not. If you're using a really lean beef, it's not gonna need it. If you're using a higher fat content, you may need to. So I think I'm gonna drain this. Looks like there's quite a bit in there. So you can either take a paper towel and get up some of that grease or drain it you know, into a colander, into a jar and get rid of it that way. Whatever you like to do, go ahead and drain it if you need to. So I've drained the ground beef and I've put it in a bowl and we're gonna put this off to the side because we're gonna cook our vegetables and then we will add it back to the pan. So I've drained it completely. So I am gonna add just a little bit of oil, not much for our vegetables. There's still a little bit of beef fat in there, which will help as well. The beef took about five or seven minutes and now we're gonna add our vegetables and we want these to be slightly crisp. So we're gonna add these and really we wanna cook them for probably about five minutes if that. So let's add all of them at once. Once you've added them, you wanna start tossing them around. We have our garlic and ginger on standby. We have our sauce on standby and our pasta is almost done. So keep everything in the pan moving. Again, you want it probably medium high heat. Cut it back a little bit if you need to, if maybe your pasta's behind in cooking and you wanna keep everything on time. All right, once your vegetables have gotten to where you want them, we wanna add that ground beef back in. Start mixing it all together. You can also add your ginger and garlic. Get everything mixed up nicely. If you have cut your heat back, make sure to cut it back up because we want that cornstarch in the sauce to activate and thicken up everything. Once everything's mixed well, we can add our cooked noodles. Here's our cooked spaghetti and I've cooked it a few seconds shy of being totally done because it's gonna cook a little bit more in the pan here. You wanna toss all that around with whatever utensil is easiest. I'm starting with a spoon, but I'm probably gonna to move to tongs. That's gonna be easier for me. And then once you have mixed everything we can add the sauce. So here's our sauce that we made earlier. Give it one last good mix to blend everything again and get anything that's settled. You wanna pour it over. And then you wanna to toss everything to coat it in the sauce. It'll thicken up with that cornstarch. You wanna do that for just a minute or two. And once everything's worked in, you're ready to serve. Okay, here's our 
gluten-free beef lo mein made with ground beef, ton of vegetables. I put a little bit of sesame seed on top, some green onions. Sriracha would be great on this if you wanted some heat or a little bit of crushed red pepper. You could also add that to the sauce if your whole family likes spicy. Let's give it a taste. That beef is cooked well. The veggies are still a little crisp, which is what you want when you stir fry. The Asian flavors come through, the garlic, the ginger, the soy sauce. This may not be authentic, but I think it's gonna help satisfy that Asian food craving that you're having. Guys, that's all I have for today. I hope you give this recipe a try. Leave me any comments below, and I hope to see you on the next video.